Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. Today, I just wanted to do another quick tutorial to show you how I fix drop stitches whenever I don't have any additional tools with me besides my yarn and my needles. Typically, whenever I drop a stitch, I'll use a crochet hook, but you don't always have a crochet hook with you. So I'm just gonna show you how I fix a knit and a purl stitch with no additional tools. So if you're interested, stick around. So I'm just gonna show you how I fix a dropped knit stitch in two different situations. The first one is this purl stitch that I have here. I accidentally purled when I was trying to do stuck net, so I will intentionally drop this knit stitch, fix this purl stitch, turn it into a knit stitch, and then pick it all back up. The other one is probably the more common situation, and that's when you've actually dropped a stitch and you realize at some point. So what I do is put a stitch marker in so I don't forget that I need to fix it. And then when we get to that, we'll pick that stitch up too. And we're gonna do this all just using our needles. You may know how to do this with a crochet hook, but you don't always have one with you. So this is a good technique to know. First, let's just get over to the column of stitches with the purl stitch that I wanna turn into a knit stitch. So I'll just knit my way over. So here we are. So here is the purl. I do this technique whenever I'm only a few rows down. I wouldn't necessarily want to drop all the way down and fix it with just my needles, but um, you could. So here, I'm just going to take that stitch off my left hand needle and then just intentionally drop these stitches. You may want to put a stitch marker in the stitch below the one you're going to fix. Um, I'm not going to, but if you're a little nervous, you could do that. So in order to fix this drop stitch, you're gonna get your right hand needle and you're gonna enter the stitch from front to back. So get it on your needle. And then the next step is to look at these strands of yarn that run between these rows of stitches. And you're just gonna wanna put your needle under that first strand of yarn. So now on your right hand needle, you're looking at this first bit of yarn. Here is your stitch. This second is that strand of yarn that runs between the row of stitches just above the dropped one. And all you're going to do to fix this is take the drop stitch, pass it over that strand of yarn, and off your needle. And that's it. So we'll do it again two more times. So look at those bars of yarn that run between the rows of stitches above this drop stitch that's on your needle. Pick up the very next one. Just be sure you pick up the next one because you don't want to get these kind of twisted up. Pick up the next one, then you're gonna take your drop stitch, pass it over and that yarn, and off your needle. And we'll do that one more time. So we've picked up that bar, the drop stitch over that yarn off the needle. Now we do still need to work this stitch so I just pass it back over and knit it as normal. Let's get um, a couple stitches along and we'll take a look at it. So here we go. Um, you'll notice the tension isn't perfect there but that's okay that's the kind of uh, tension issue that's just going to come out in blocking so that's how you would intentionally drop and pick it up then we're going to do the exact same process with this drop stitch so i'll take out the stitch marker enter the stitch from front to back and same process go under this bar pass the stitch on my needle over that bit of yarn and off And you'll see we fixed this dropped stitch. And there we go. We fixed that purl that was supposed to be a knit and we fixed that dropped stitch and it looks pretty good. So next we'll see how to fix a drop stitch from the purl side of your fabric. Now you do have two options here. Some people just flip it around and fix a drop stitch as if it was a knit, which would result in purls on the other side. So that's probably the easier thing to do, but it's good to know both. And I don't mind doing it from the purl side, so I'll show you because you may want to do it as well. So first I'll just take out this stitch marker that I had. Oops. All right. 
So I have my drop stitch here and the setup is exactly the same. I'm going to go from front to back. I'm going to look at the bars of yarn that run between the columns of stitches above the drop stitch. And I'm just going to go under that very next one. And here's where it's different. So this is the setup if I was going to fix it as if it was a knit stitch. I would have my drop stitch on the right side, my bar of yarn closer to the tip of the needle, and I would pass the drop stitch over and off. But for a purl, what you're going to want to do is just swap the order. So the easiest thing for me to do is go under this bar of yarn, just stick my needle here just to kind of push my stitch. And just now I've swapped them. So I have the bar of yarn that goes between the next row of stitches furthest from the tip of the needle and the drop stitch closest to the tip of the needle. Now to fix it, you're gonna pull this bar of yarn through the drop stitch. And to do that, it's super simple. You go in from back to front through that stitch, go over that bar and just pull it through and drop the stitch off the needle. Then you're gonna go again from front to back, grab the next bar, swap the order. So under that bar, just kind of use your finger to pull the bar over and the needle to pull the stitch forward. Now you have your stitch close to the tip of your needle, that bar of yarn um, furthest from the tip of the needle, go in from back to front, grab that bar of yarn and just pull it through. So we'll do it one more time. Get that bar, swap the order. Then I'm going to go in from back to front, grab that bar and pull it through. And then that's it. So let's just purl that one. We'll just purl a few across and then we'll take a look. So again, there's a little bit of wonky tension, but it'll come out in the blocking. I think this happens no matter how you fix them. Sometimes it just kind of occurs. That is how you would do it. This technique comes in handy a lot whenever you just don't have those extra tools and notions with you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if there's any other techniques you want to see. And if you haven't already, hit that little like button if this was useful and hit the subscribe button if you want to see what other knitting related content I have coming up in the future. Until next time, enjoy your knitting and I will see y'all later.